All right, what's up everybody? Uh, Landon here with LMR.com. We're relaxing today. We're just gonna talk about cars, we're gonna talk about engines, and we're gonna talk about a dyno. Typically it's dyno day, but uh, this is gonna kind of be a hybrid video where we combine a dyno day, talk a little bit about an engine, and we talk a little bit about the car that the engine is in. A couple months ago at the time of this video, we released the overview video for the Blueprint engine. Been a great video for us. It's been a great engine for us. It's, it's a great engine for the enthusiast and for the hobbyist uh, that wants almost a turnkey solution, you know, without all the racy type trinkets involved with engines and, and things like that. And what I mean by almost turnkey, you know, you have to dress it with the timing cover and accessories, and then you have to install either a carb or an EFI setup. But in that video, we go over more of the engine specifics, such as like the short block stuff, oil pan, timing cover, crankshaft, connecting rod, piston, some of the specifications of the cylinder head. So if you wanna know more about the Blueprint engine, I'll leave that video down in the description for you to check out. But for today, we are going to be talking about what this engine and what this particular setup in this particular car is making to the rear wheels. And the way Blueprint engine advertises their 302 cubic inch crate engine and the one that we sell here at LMR.com. They advertise that at 361 horsepower and 334 pound-feet of torque. Now, when they dyno the engine, they dyno it in a dyno cell at their facility in Nebraska. And the components that, that they are using uh, at the time of the engine dyno is a 600 CFM carburetor, NGK spark plugs that are gapped to 35 thousandths, a 50 ounce or 6.4 inch diameter harmonic balancer, a 50 ounce weighted flex plate or flywheel, the converter has a stall speed of 1800. More or less the information that they have there, they just uh, quote unquote mention OEM. And then the intake manifold is a dual plane and the fuel they are using is 87 octane. As far as the timing goes, the initial timing can range anywhere from 10 to 16 degrees in their dyno cell and a total timing of 32 to 34 degrees. Now I know what you're probably thinking, it's a 302 cubic inch engine and all the engines have the same stuff. Well, why wouldn't the timing be the same? There are variables and the explanation is probably longer than what it needs to be. So we're just gonna leave it at that uh, for the sake of the video is there's always variables. So when you see advertised crate engine horsepower, that is always at the flywheel or the flex plate. So once you bolt up a clutch and pressure plate assembly, bolt up your transmission, drive shaft, you turn the axles, you turn the wheels, you turn the brake rotors, you're taking horsepower from that engine. I don't even know who told me this back in the day, but think of the rear wheel horsepower and the rear wheel torque as your take home pay after taxes, okay? The drive line is the taxes uh, in this uh, formula or this equation. So speaking of numbers, individual results are always going to vary. We're running a Holly System Max uh, upper and lower intake, 70 millimeter throttle body, and a factory 87 to 93 style intake, even though 86 to 88 was non-mass air, they were speed density, and then of course 89 to 93 was mass air. Most of the intake stuff was all the same except for the inlet tube, but we just have a flow tube, if you will, since this is running the Terminator X, and the Terminator X is a speed density system. Now to get the car where it is to this day, I wanna say it's been a long time coming only because it really has in the, in the scope of years. I'm gonna keep this short, sweet, and point. This is LMR's 1988 GT. Yes, I know it has an LX nose, no ground effects, and an LX rear bumper, but the car within the amount of years, I'd say 10 or 12, maybe longer than that, few employees have owned it throughout that span. And what a few of those employees did during their ownership of the car was freshen up some of the interior uh, upholstery and some things. And then the uh, other employee kind of wanted to do a, uh, an LX conversion just because uh, they kind of referred the LX styling over the GT styling. And that is why you see the car in the state and the shape that it is in at the time of this video. I know I've uh, spent my sweat equity with this car in redoing the dash, the center console, because this car actually has the 5.0 resto center console. If y'all didn't watch that video, it'd be available down in the description. And then Cameron Brady also helped me uh, redo a lot of the interior. But as far as the engine bay is concerned, Cameron Brady and Scott Hubbard uh, were the two that did all the heavy lifting here. And uh, when we took the old engine out, it was kind of one of those deals of why we were there within reason, let's address, let's fix, let's refurbish, and let's redo whatever uh, it is that may need to be redone. And that's what we did, address some of the surface rust, 
uh, got all that prepped and sorted. Cameron masked off almost everything he could uh, that was still within the engine bay uh, that we didn't want to get paint on. And then we resprayed the engine bay with the LMR base coat that we offer on the site. We don't have every base coat available, uh, but black is one of those. And it laid down extremely well and added a lot of luster and a lot of newness to the engine bay and kind of complement the rest of the new components. Uh, but within all that, SVE radiator, the contour fan setup, overflow tank, coil cover. We redid a lot of the harnesses, uh, cleaned up some of the connectors. That way it kind of flowed well with the new Terminator X harness. There are some things we just cleaned up and repurposed, but like air conditioner, accessory drive, all that stuff uh, is brand new to this car. And it's a really good driver. The AC blows cold, got power steering. If I didn't mention that already, it's nice. And especially with the little camshaft that Blueprint puts into their engine. All right, so let's get back over to the engine uh, and we'll start talking about uh, some data. But like I said, Blueprint crate engine, Holly System Max upper lower 70 millimeter throttle body, and then an OEM style air intake. As far as accessory drive is concerned, we have an alternator, tensioner, AC, power steering, water pump, and then we have a small pump delete pulley. These are the shorty headers that we offer on the site. Uh, those are gonna go into a free flowing or off-road mid pipe. Uh, and then that's going to exit to a Flowmaster catback. We did reutilize the OEM T5 transmission. It has a stock drive shaft and a 273 rear gear. And I put a lot of emphasis on 273 because this thing is gonna turn some mile an hour. We're gonna dyno it in third gear and then we're also gonna dyno it in fourth gear. And I think this thing is probably gonna turn, I don't know, 160 mile an hour, who knows? But it's gonna make some mile per hour. 17 inch SVE mesh wheels with a 275 4017 tire and this also has a SN95 Cobra style brake setup. We do have 93 octane fuel in the tank and then the Terminator X is dialed in for our particular setup. Uh, it took us a little while to figure out. I uh, had to lean on a few of our resources, but we did get everything sorted and this car runs extremely well. That's all the technical data, I'm pretty sure. Electric fans, I, I covered that already, uh, so we're not turning a mechanical fan. That's gonna help you know, free up a little bit of power as well. So uh, spark plugs are gapped the way Blueprint recommends, and then initial timing is gonna be somewhere around the uh, 12, 14 degrees. Total is somewhere around what Blueprint had it at as well, uh, 34 to 36. All right, everybody, before we get into some results, we are gonna show you the run uh, before the Blueprint engine. All right, we'll go ahead and get that run pulled up. Uh, and the way the car sat before the Blueprint engine, um, I mean, it had the smog pump, delete pulley, off-road mid-pipe, uh, but for the most part, it was a you know stock 5.0. The car made 207 horsepower, 4,500 RPM, and then 277 pound-feet of torque at 2,900 RPM. I'm gonna close that graph out, that way we don't get too congested, or I don't get too congested here on screen. We're gonna pull up the fourth gear hit that we did, and the results are really, really nice. Three hundred and three point three horsepower at fifty seven hundred RPM and three hundred and eleven point two pound feet of torque at forty two hundred RPM. So almost a one hundred horsepower increase and about thirty four pound feet of torque increase at peak. What's even more impressive are the curve gains with the better flowing cylinder head camshaft and upper lower intake combo. This thing starts to come alive around the four thousand RPM mark. And just to highlight a specific area, at 5,200 RPM, there are curve gains of 108 horsepower and 108 pound-feet of torque over what was almost a 100% factory setup. That's crazy. You definitely feel it too. I mean, duh. You know, you're thinking, well, dang, Landon, that's fairly obvious. Well, I mean, yeah, but sometimes it's just cool to talk about it. And then uh, as far as this engine goes, Blueprint dynos each engine individually. And this engine here, this must have been on a Wednesday, and I actually think it was on a Wednesday. Uh, it made 391.2 horsepower and 376.8 pound-feet of torque 
at the flywheel, which was July 31st. Let's go ahead and see if that was Wednesday. Ha! Huh, it was a Wednesday. This was a Wednesday engine. So I don't know if the old saying is true or not, but so 391 horsepower at the flywheel uh, for this particular engine, again, with the components that I mentioned previously. And then here's your rear wheel number uh, with this particular setup uh, through a Fox body Mustang. So 391.2 horsepower to 303.3 .3 horsepower, and then uh, 376.8 pound-feet of torque and 311.2 pound-feet of torque at the tire. So needless to say, again, individual results will vary. Just because we are making what we're making uh, with this particular setup in this particular car, even if you were to copy paste everything you see here, uh, your car may make a little bit more, your car may make the same, it may make a little bit less. So always, always, always keep that in mind uh, when we start to compare dyna results. And speaking of dyna results, I mean, I've beat this horse dead uh, by now, but a dyno is a tuning tool. We just have the ability to use it uh, to, to retrieve rear-wheel horsepower and rear-wheel torque data uh, to pass along to all of you. That way you kind of have a generalized idea as to what a setup is making. And if you have the same or a similar setup, you know, you can kind of position your number in that area as well. But I can tell you this thing absolutely moves out on the street and probably need to do like a ride and drive video uh, because the drivability is actually really good. Even considering the, you know, the mild camshaft that's in it to the Terminator X uh, ECU with the calibration we have, it runs really good and it pulls really hard. And we're just glad to see the car move under its own power. And kind of really the only points we have left on it is just to address some body work. You know, respray some trim, maybe just a real light spruce up in the interior, you know, a vacuum and a wipe down because as, as the stuff sits and people are in and out of it, you know, it gets kind of dirty, but you know, that stuff that can all come in time because, you know, as I've talked about in the video, uh, the car, the car has sat for around here for a while. Uh, so it's good to see it make some noise and um, we're glad to, we're glad to be able to do this and, and bring you all along for the ride. So uh, as always, if you find value in what we do, uh, consider liking the video, subscribing to the channel, turn on notifications. And then until we see you in the next one for all things Fox Body Mustang, keep it right here with the real enthusiasts, LMR.com.